I would now like to invite Mr. Bob Kuhn to the podium. I did it like this to give Mrs. Ziegler a hard time today. I figured she needed it. It's been 72 and a half days since I learned I was given the great honor of speaking today. I know this because rarely has a day gone by when I haven't been asked, have you started writing it? Is your speech done yet? Am I gonna cry? I hope not. I would just smile and say, nope. But in all honesty, I've probably written this speech in my mind 100 times. Then of course I rewrote it in there 99 times. And then once on this very paper this afternoon. So give me a break if there's any spelling errors. Okay, I can admit the last paragraph there because I thought you guys wouldn't get that joke. Anyways, whenever I'm asked to speak in front of a large number of people, I like to learn a little bit about what others have done in this position. Unfortunately, when I Googled things to say when talking in front of a bunch of anxious teenagers wearing non-breathing robes in 85 degree weather that just wanted to get to the point where they turned their funny looking cat toys sitting on their geometrically shaped hats the other side, I didn't find much. <laughs> so I went with what my dad has always told me. Do your best, but remember others are trying to outdo you. I can just hear the kids saying, yada, yada, yada. It's going to be one of those parent listen to your parents' speeches. Heck, Mr. Kuhn, you sound like my parents. I want to let you know that I understand what you're thinking here up today, because I was there when I graduated from high school a few years ago. <laughs> wow, I didn't think you guys would laugh at that one. <laughs> Dang, I should have shaved today. OK, um, all I could think of is where the next open house was, i.e., where the next free meal was, and I wasn't listening to what they were saying anyways. But I've learned in the future years since then that when times get tough, it is nice to know that when you fall, you can fall back on their advice. You know, when it's all said and done, listen to their advice, because no matter what is said here today by me or any other speakers, let's face it, nothing's really going to sink in. You're just too excited to get out of here and post pictures on Facebook. I'm not dumb, but that's not going to stop me from giving you some advice anyways. I'm a teacher, remember. I have to be stubborn when it comes to giving out information. Ooh. Mrs. Ziegler's laughing at me right now, saying I would have stapled that for you. <laughs> Think of today as a day of choice, because that is exactly what it is. For the past few days, you've heard people telling you goodbye, good luck, but I say welcome. Welcome to the next stage of your life. You're now beginning a journey that will last a lifetime. A journey in which you'll have to make decisions on your own and not have mom and dad there to bail you out. Hopefully you're all seeing that as a metaphor, not literally. I feel confident that this class can rise to the occasion and make the right choices. I mean, just look at how much you've grown in the last four years. It seems like only yesterday, Mrs. Conger came running into the teacher's lounge saying, they're drawing them everywhere. If you don't know what they are drawing, ask, us, ask one of these uh, graduates over here. I'm not going to say it with all little kids around. To that end, I will give you my th three rules to think about, quickly forget, but years from now, uh, kick yourself for not having listened to. Rule number one, take risk. Refuse to let the idea of failure cause you to tiptoe through each day because you don't want to fail. We must learn to confront the, nat the natural human fear of failure. We cannot allow ourselves to be so afraid to fail at something that we don't even try. Where would we be if successful people didn't keep trying? What would happen if everyone quit when the going got tough? Too often in our society are we focused on the end product that we don't see how the product came to be. The same goes for success. When we meet someone that's successful, we see the person with the fancy cars, the expensive house, and the other material things. I use even my own brother as just an example. He could be seen as being very successful because he has all the above mentioned things. But what you don't see when you meet him are the long nights of studying, the tedious jobs he had to work through college, the nervousness of applying to a program that only took 31 out of hundreds of qualified applicants, and of course the packs and packs of Raymond noodles that were eaten. So take a risk. Go up to someone you've never talked to before 
for whatever reason and start up a conversation. Try to play an instrument, ask that pretty girl out. Whatever it is that you're afraid to do, do it. When it's all said and done, you might fail, but then again, you might make a new friend, learn a new skill, or just know that at least you tried. Rule number two, it's related to number one. Don't base your risk on what the crowd is telling you to do, because honestly, you could be in a crowd of dumb people. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> this is one that I've always stressed on my son Adam when I tell him to be a leader, not a follower. It's very easy to act goofy or stupid and be popular. If you know Adam, you know what I'm talking about. Because people would rather laugh in a crowd than do the right things by themselves. For you, I say, don't be that person who years after graduating high school is still hanging out with high schoolers thinking you're popular. That's not cool. Get on with your life. Get out there and experience new things. Yes, I know that these, you might feel these are the best years of your life, but seriously, high school, it's not the best years of your life. Think of the drama. Think of all the other stuff that you went through the last four years. Yeah, some of it was fun, but then there was a lot of you know what. Okay. Finally, and honestly, this is the most important. Listen to your parents. You'll be amazed at what they know, provided you actually listen to them. Pretty soon, you're going to wish that you had paid more attention to mom or dad when you were being taught how to cook and do laundry. You're going to realize that even if you did pay attention, your mom is the best cook in the world. I bring up with what my dad always said about doing your best. It's not just enough to do your best because you'll, because you'll become complacent and lazy. You have to constantly push yourself to do better. Of course, when I was in high school, he gently pushed me along. Anything below was a B was unacceptable in his book. And he wasn't, a, he wasn't the type to blame the teacher for bad grades either. He blamed me because he always said that I earned the grades. I wasn't given the grades. Yes, it was tough in the time I detested him for pushing me along, but eventually it sank in why he was pushing me along. He didn't want me living in his house anymore. <laughs> Just a few weeks ago, it's kind of sunk in with my own son. I overheard him talking to his grandpa about his grades. When asked about his math grade, Adam said, yeah, I have a B plus right now, but it's coming up because apparently, he said it just like that, it's not good enough for my dad. And that's, that, that really sunk in. Because every parent wants success for their child. They got you here, now bust your butt to go farther. Which leads me to my final statement, which is really a quote. And it really brings uh, everything together in that you are, a at, you are at a point in your life in which you can choose to look back on what has happened or look forward to what happened or what is going to happen. I personally, uh, personally would go with Jimi Hendrix's quote of, excuse me while I kiss the sky. Thank you.